My name's Lang. Uh, I'm back to gripe about more old APIs. This is rich error handling in LLVM. So LLVM error handling history. Uh, we have historically used ad hoc approaches to uh, handling recoverable errors. So we've used Boolean results, null putters, string errors to describe uh, places in our environment where things have gone wrong, malformed input and the like. Um, and our go-to is std error code, which is the uh, C++ standard library error type. Std error code is only good for enumerable errors. You can say what went wrong, but you can't describe it in detail. For instance, you can say file not found, but you can't say the file at this, this particular path was not found because you can't enumerate all the paths up front. And all of these uh, mechanisms for error handling suffer from a lack of enforcement. It's really easy, even after you've detected an error, an error situation, to fail to propagate that error or to drop it on the floor. C++ has an answer for this and its exceptions. Uh, you can describe your errors with user-defined types in arbitrary detail. Uh, you can use type-safe handlers to catch those errors. And once you've thrown an exception, you can't forget to deal with it. But they are not zero cost as advertised. Uh, they uh, increase binary size because you have extra metadata that you have to maintain, and they change your control flow everywhere because they're opt-out rather than opt-in, and we haven't opted out. So for that reason, they're turned off in LLVM. So, I wanted to get back some of the benefits of exceptions without actually turning them on, and that led to the de development of LLVM error. Uh, LLVM error is an error as a return value scheme, so it's like error code in that respect. You return something that represents the error case. Uh, if you have a failing function foo, you return an error. If you have a function bar that was going to return a t in the success case, you return an expected t, which is a discriminated union of an error or a t. Uh, and these are just lightweight wrappers around the actual error descriptions, which are user-defined types. So you can define your error with a user-defined type in arbitrary detail. And each of these lightweight wrappers has a little flag in it that tells the error whether or not you've checked it, like whether you've done due diligence in handling that error. Uh, if you don't check your error, it will blow your program up. So idiomatic usage of this system looks like this. You have a failing function foo, it returns an error. Uh, you would call that by saying, if auto error equals foo, return error. By doing this check, by capturing the value and converting it to Boolean, you've done due diligence, you've checked your error. If you haven't got an error and you continue on the else case here, uh, that error will be safely destructed. If you try and write code like this, we'll blow the program up right here where you failed to check that value. You also get type safe handlers with this system, a lot like a catch clause in C++ exceptions. So if you have a failing function foo, there's a function called handle errors. You pass in an error as the first argument, and then you can give it a list of handlers, which I've represented here by lambdas, and, and this works in code. Uh, the handle errors function will walk down your list of lambdas until it finds the first one whose type matches the dynamic type of the error that you've thrown, and it'll run that handler for you. If there is no handler, uh, your error will come back out of the handler's er handle errors routine and you have to pass it up the stack. So the benefits of this system are it's much safer. You can avoid vulnerabilities and crashes due to missed errors. Um, and it is much more descriptive because you can use uh, user-defined types to define or to describe your errors. So this is an example from LLVM obj dump. We used to use a std error code. If you gave it a malformed Marco file with a particular bug in the head header, the error you got back was malformed Marco file, which is not very helpful in diagnosing what actually went wrong. Now that we have this system, we can describe it in arbitrary detail. The new error message is truncated or malformed or, uh, object with the details of exactly what was wrong. Uh, and these user-defined error types, like exceptions, can form um, hierarchies, so you can actually describe a hierarchy of error types. This can be useful in certain situations. For instance, uh, if you're walking an archive and you're willing to skip over bad object files in that archive or malformed objects in that archive because you're just printing out diagnostics, you can do that by saying, I don't care about object file errors. So quick summary, there are a bunch of utilities in the error.h header that you can use to use this new API. Um, there's interoperability with std error code and error or for converting existing APIs. It's easy to do surgical updates to your API to use this new system. Um, there are some standard types. If you only need a string error, you can represent it in this system using the string error type. Um, if you're using tool code and you don't care about propagating your errors up, you can use the exit on error idiom to just bail out of your code immediately anytime you hit an error and log the message to the terminal. So, this is the place to go if you have failing code that you want to uh, you want to be able to represent the errors for. Don't use std error code anymore. Use LLVM error. 
and check out the programmer's manual that has all the details of how you should use this API. All right, thank you very much.